Welcome to the Networking with Michelle podcast, the show dedicated on providing you the how-tos of marketing and networking strategies. Here we believe in the Jim Rohn quote, success is nothing more than a few simple disciplines practiced every day. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Networking with Michelle. I'm your host, Michelle Gourmet, coming between your ears, giving you something for your mind with today's episode. I just swear I want to be a rapper. I just want to be a rapper one day. Anyways, today's episode, uh, we have Dana Hewling, and she is the creative genius behind BID Creative Agency here in Houston, Texas. And I do want to let you know, this is a pre-recorded episode. Uh, Early 2017, Dana, her company, actually won an Addy Award for logo design. And if you're not familiar with the Addy Awards, it's, um, it's American Advertising Awards. Um, anyways, a bunch of marketers create creative geniuses. They get together and they're acknowledged among their industry, among their peers. And she won for logo design. I think that was really, really cool. So unfortunately, um, once again, this was a pre-recorded, so it's not mentioned in the actual interview, but I definitely want to give her uh, major props for the work that she's doing, her and her team. Uh, it's just awesome. Can you say like my my designer, my graphics designer is an award winning graphic designer? That's pretty cool to say. So shout out to Dana and um, BID Creative for always doing good work. And this is the thing, right? So so many of us we want to start businesses, whether you know it's in the midst of corporate or outside of corporate, and Things are changing, but usually, you know, we print out some business cards. We're on a budget. We'll go to Vistaprint. We'll put out some business cards. Uh, we may or may not do a website. You know, sometimes we do the bare minimum. And in this interview, um, Dana and I, we talk about the importance of design, right? Your The design uh, – we always talk about personal branding and your reputation, but what about the, the brand – building your brand through the design aspect. You know, what does your business card look like? What does your website look like? Do those things need to be uniformed uh, when it comes to your branding? Um, And then, of course, if I'm an entrepreneur, if I'm a new person, I'm new to this, what should I look for? You know, what are the questions I should ask a creative person when it comes to creating my logo or building my website? Uh, so we talk all about all of this and more, and it's just a great episode. I think it's something that you should – look, I had to learn the hard way. I remember 2012, uh, 2013, I was just – in the very beginning stages of formulating what Line 25 Consulting is going to look like. Um, excuse me, not even that. I got lucky with that logo. Shout out to Studio 1816 Designs for that. All right, you always appreciate uh, <laughs> Before Line 25, I was working on, I um, uh, wanted to do this website with all of these professional networking events here in Houston, and I called it AfterWorkConnections.com. And I was in school at the time. I was at Full Sail University. Um, a lot of designers in that school, whatever. And I was reaching out, you know, among my peers, um, trying to give someone business. And oh my God, I I remember this one lady was like, um, "Yeah, I charge one hundred and fifty dollars for logos." And I'm like, "I am not paying one hundred and fifty dollars for a logo." Psh, get out of here. <laughs> and I ended up finding this one guy. Um, and I paid him for maybe, I don't even know if I paid him 50 bucks and I was like, eh. And then my brother had found someone on Fiverr and he probably spent $20 and I was like, eh. It was a very sad situation. Needless to say, I had to learn the hard way. And I wish I at least had a more in-depth conversation uh, with the woman to understand and know why she charged $150 for a logo. Because sometimes when you get, when you go with the cheap labor, you end up paying more, right? Or you're paying for the same thing multiple times. And look, we spent 70 bucks on two different logos that we didn't like. Whereas if I was more informed, I can be like, okay, well, do I need to wait a little bit longer, get my money right, and then pay for the $150 logo? It 
look, it's worth it. I'm going to say when it comes to design, take your time and do it right. Get someone that can do it right. And I um, hope you learn a lot through this episode. Once again, uh, BID Creative. And then uh, my, I don't know if this is a conflict of interest, but I have to give a shout out uh, to my designer as well, Studio 1816 Designs, for always taking care of me from my logos um, to my book covers. So uh, thank you both. I, I respect both designers, both hustles. But the biggest thing I want you to get out of this is um, just the, the learning aspect of it, right? Um, not going cheap and what to look for when it comes to hiring a graphic designer. And if you are a designer, you know, maybe what are some of the things that you need to structure your business or even ask clients that you need to pull out of clients because get a client like me, I'm like, well, I don't know. I just know what I like. So, <laughs> but you know, what are those things you have to extract from your client in order for you um, to do good work and also make your client happy? Okay. So look, stay tuned. This is a great episode. I'm always appreciative. Um, grateful for you, the listener. Uh, grateful to be doing this. I'm trying to take it to the next level. And um, yeah, hey, without further ado, Dana Hooling. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Networking with Michelle. Today's special guest is Dana. I know her personally. She is the creative genius behind BID, Creative Agency. Dana, welcome to the show. How are you doing today? Oh, thank you for having me, Michelle. It's a great pleasure to be with you. Yeah, absolutely. So why don't you tell everyone about yourself? Well, as she said, I'm Dana Hewling. I am the owner and creative director of BID. We do branding, identity, print, and web design. Our whole mission is to be remarkable and do whatever we can on a creative standpoint to help our clients be remarkable in their respective industries. Did you always know you were creative? Yes, pretty much. I've always loved to draw and paint and build things. Actually, the first job I ever wanted to do was be a hairstylist. So, always something creative. Yeah. It's the only thing my parents ever told me that I wasn't allowed to do. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's interesting. Is that the, yeah, I was like, no, you can't be a hairstylist. Is that the Jamaican side? Yeah. But how did you know? Um, what are your degrees in? Well, my degree is in mass communication, specializing in advertising. But how did you know that illustration or design work could be an actual career path for you? I was, my major is actually in architecture, but I realized that I have a very strong dislike for physics. I know why it's important. It was just my brain and physics weren't clicking. And I still wanted to do something creative and sat with and talked with my counselor and was like, oh, advertising. Then still behind the scenes, still get to make pretty stuff. And that sounds like fun. And Because within advertising, there's a whole bunch of different sectors that you can be in. So you have, even within just creative itself, you can either go a copywriting route, which is writing, and, or you can do the art direction and I've always loved art and I'm very good with layout. Gotcha. 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 So usually new business owners, they think of, they need a logo website and business card, right? Some of them go the cheap route, Vista print, let me, just give me something. Right. So how do you push past that and talk about the importance of uniform branding when it comes to establishing your business? Yes, you said Vistaprint. You might as well have also said the other bad word, which is Wix. I hate Wix. So those two things, I can't say that those are the worst things ever and no business should ever use them because I understand the need for them. But there's always, so even if you have to go that route, that should be no more than a six-month plan. That that should be your six-month placeholder so you can get the business going and build some capital to get your real brand up. Be again, because I also like, I'm not the type, I like 
hitting the ground running. So I like people, if you have a business, you have your dream, I say go for it, try and get things going as much as possible. But with business, it's the same way as that whole principle, you dress for the job you want. So you need to get your logo, you need to get your brand. People are being hit with hundreds, if not thousands, Thousands of images and ads every single day. Media has made it so much easier for people to be advertised to. And so if your brand is not memorable and it's not standing out to them, there's no way that you can compete in today's market. Because someone sitting in on their couch can have a business and it look like it's a, a 10,000 or 10,000 employee company just the way it's presented. <laughs> Absolutely. I like how you mentioned that if you do go the cheap route, Vista Print or Wix or whatever, it should be like a six month plan. I think, I think that's some good leeway um, versus just jumping in, um, you know, paying for that creative cost. But I guess what are some ways to prepare our transition? Like, what should a creative marketing budget look like? Huh, the budget, it really just depends on what your industry is doing. So, I mean, logo is uh, one thing that is absolutely non-negotiable. And by standards, your logo should last you about seven to ten years before you really need to tweak it. So if you can invest a couple hundred dollars in a good logo that will carry you for a while and that is what you're going to help build your business on the logo is not the end of everything and it doesn't define the whole brand but that should be a good solid foundation because within your branding you can kind of tweak things around you have your color set you can okay well i kind of like this style like using stripes this year next year maybe we use circles or something that makes sense with that's still consistent and doesn't it's not completely across because rebranding is very expensive <laughs> so that's one thing but after you have your logo set business card is still i still think it's a must uh, your website is also a must and then social media and social media is probably the most cost effective marketing tools other than email marketing email marketing is still very big so those platforms i would say would be a minimum and then depending on what you need you'll probably need if your restaurant you'll need your you'll need bags and menus and and then brochures rack cards any just type of branded material. So just depends on what you're doing and the extent, because you can add upon everything. I'm glad you mentioned rebranding earlier. So say you have been in business, you're at that 10 year mark. How do you know that it's time for a rebrand, not based, not based on the years in business, but I guess what are some other things we should consider? Well, a rebrand can be done upon several different things. So if you did your brand, let's say 10 years ago, and it was very on trend for then, it may not be on trend now and it may look dated. So you'd want to update just to make sure that you're, you're fresh and you don't come across as stale. Another thing is, uh, especially for people in business and people, whether new, I've been in business for two little over two and a half years and my focus is constantly being revised and so if you're in business for a while the business that you started out with may not be the same business you are today or your focus may be different or maybe you're just yeah you're trying to just appeal to a different client you have this segment locked but something is inhibiting you from getting to this other segment and so I don't know if I'm I'm allowed to kind of give like a case study. Okay, so like my one of my favorite clients. Don't tell everybody else this, <laughs> but so Charlie's Plumbing, actually my first Houston client, they rebranded. They've been in business for, and their brand is red, black, 
or was red, black, white, and blue. Very standard plumbing. It came across as very commercial, no, very residential. But their primary clients are commercial and industrial. So they wanted to rebrand, not because they don't want to deal with residential clients, but be- because when a large corporation sees them, they're like, oh, you can handle my boilers and all of my other things that I'm not really aware of what the names are. But so they wanted to have a brand that was more serious and more professional. And so they did that and they've rebranded about the oh yeah, last two and a half years. And that's been successful for them. And so what color was it a color scheme or what were some of the changes you helped them with? Well, they, before they came with me, they had redone their logo. So that, that was one thing stuck after that. And so after they came to me, we came up with the whole branding scheme. So talking to the owner, she loves, they love copper, they love metal because they deal with a lot of piping. So everything is really, there's a lot of metallic colors infused. So we, there's a lot of cup, copper They have this metal man who's really just serious and ready to work. (laughs) And so comparing that to a lot of the other plumbing companies, which I said are are red and blue and white, to have a company that is copper and silver, that is, yes. And they do have some of the best plumbing trucks ever. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. So what are some things someone should look for in a creative agency? A creative agency, you need to be able to communicate with the, whether it be your client liaison or the actual designer, whoever you're communicating with, you should be able to communicate with them. They should be able to understand your needs. (laughs) Dog. They should be able to understand your needs. Jesus, can you hear that? (laughs) Oh, goodness. They should be able to understand your needs and communicate that in through visually. Because a lot of some clients are very good at describing themselves, but not every client is. And the whole point of hiring a designer is, is because you don't know their job. And so their job is to interpret what you need. And I feel like as a designer, it is my job to make sure that I give the perfect balance. There should always be a compromise. I should try to give you as much of what you want to represent your company as possible, but making sure that you still get exactly what you need. Absolutely. I guess, what are some questions, if you could put yourself on the other side of the table, what are some questions that a business person should ask a creative director such as yourself? Questions? (laughs) well I guess it's you need to know how they work and make sure that the way they work works with how you work we all have our own method methodology of everything and some people are stricter than others say I need to do this and this in this order I am the, the most strict with websites so especially but if you're doing a logo you Also want to know, again, fee structure, timeline, those are the standards. You should also understand usage of everything. That's actually a big one. It's actually one that I really don't get as much. But you should understand what exactly you're allowed to use certain things for. Because some people will restrict you. And it could you can get restricted, especially if you're not getting that copyright for your logo or the copyright towards your design, you should understand what you're allowed to use this because you don't want any issues arising from that. Why should someone go with you, your company, versus, say, a Fiverr or Upwork or 99designs? Well, that's easy because we're awesome. (laughs) Well, we we do it differently. So Fiverr and Upwork, if you want just a whole bunch of stuff 
kind of slapped together and you just want as many options as possible, then, I mean, that that's you. But, <laughs> but as a designer, there's a lot that is taken into consideration. I'm not trying to say that these people don't pay attention, but I can't imagine that they would, especially if they haven't been paid for what they're doing. If it's more like a contest, they're slightly less invested. So especially when it comes to just design, you need to take the time to research the client, research the industry, try to make sure that they're getting something that is unique, that will stand out, that will benefit them. Because again, I can do pretty work all, all day, but the whole point is to provide the client with a good investment. So yes, it has to be pretty, but it needs to provide them with a return on their investment. So doing that research for one is important. Also, again, trying to make sure, do as much as we can. We're not lawyers, but we do as much as we can and try and make sure that we're not infringing on someone else's copyright. And so, because if you're trying to start a company that you're hoping to franchise, you're going to need to trademark everything and you're going to need to go about that paperwork and you don't want to come back when you're three years in realizing that, oh, your logo or your design infringes on this other company halfway across the country's trademark. And so by using a designer who's taking the time to make sure they're looking into those things will is beneficial. Also, because we're a branding first company, we think long term. So again, whether you're just doing a logo with us or just doing business cards, our whole purpose is to get you to this next point. So we're not designing for today. We're designing for where you're trying to be in the next three, five, ten years. And that is the whole purpose of everything. Whereas a Upwork, they're trying to just get to the next project. I like that. I like that. We're not designing for today. Um, and that's a good point because what if you do need something, whether it's three months from now or three years from now, and you're like, how do I track this one guy from Fiverr down? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You will not, you would be surprised how many clients that I have where I'm like, can I have a copy, of, like a high res of your logo? I'm like, well, I have this one file. I'm like, it's 200 by 200 pixels. Like, this is all you have? I'm like, yeah, that's all I got. Yeah. And then I'm trying to figure out how to help them when I need to design this. Yeah, and I had to learn the hard way when I first started. Well, before I did Line 25, I was trying to launch another project called After Work Connections. And I was in school, and I remember this one lady, she was like, my logos, you know, charge $250. And I was like, there is no way I'm paying $250 for a logo. And my brother was partnering with me. And I swear, uh, between me and him, we probably spent $100 on getting logos. Like, because we kept hiring different people off of Fiverr or from school trying to find the logo that we like. And then, you know, they're like, well, I'm only going to do two revisions. And I'm like, I don't like this. <laughs> and I was like, I should have just paid that lady the $250 one time. Get, just be done with it. <laughs> so I've had to learn the hard way because I have spent hundreds of dollars on multiple logos trying to get one logo when I could have just paid one person that two, three hundred dollars and be at peace with it. Exactly. Cause when you play a designer, like we get invested. Like it becomes our baby. Like your company is our company and everything that comes out of our work, it it matters. And so it's not just I just want my money. It's are you happy? Like, this is, am I, I'm doing really good work. Like, I want, because the whole thing, and there's a little bit of narcissism in it, is I want to see the logo everywhere. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> That's my work, yeah. Yeah, it's like, as a designer, you want to see your work everywhere. And so we're going to put in the blood, sweat, and tears to make sure that you get something that you are proud of to put everywhere. <laughs> That's a good point. Um, so I know you also do websites. Uh, can you focus on, I guess, 
I got a couple of different questions in my mind. But um, you mentioned Google Analytics. Why, what's the importance of Google Analytics and just metrics um, on your website as well as social media? Well, Google Analytics is a very powerful tool for one. And so, I mean, there's a lot that you can do as long as you can figure it right. So if just a standard website, nothing special going on, having Google Analytics is very important just to make sure, well, especially if you're doing social media, any type of social media marketing because you can see who's coming from where where is because you can see some stuff on the social media side especially if you're on Facebook their insights are pretty detailed but like Instagram that is sad it's very sad and so to be able to see where all of your platforms are coming from and where they're working so if you're doing if you have three social media accounts just three you got Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and then you're doing email marketing to see how those platforms are working together because not all of your, your conversions happen from one site. And so depending on what you turn on in your analytics, you can see, okay, well, this person came to your site initially from Facebook, but because they signed up for their your email marketing, they actually came back from the email and then that's when they, they subscribed to this other thing or they bought this thing. And so knowing that is helpful because then you, you can perfect or at least refine your marketing efforts. And then now if you're doing something where your site is more involved, like especially if it's an e-commerce site, you can keep testing because I, I like e <clears throat> Google Analytics to see what's working What's not working? Because if for some reason, if I notice that I have a hundred hits from iPads, but all, there's a hundred percent bounce rate, then there's something going on when it comes to iPads. And I need to go check that out and fix that because people are using, clearly want to use iPads to view my site or do this transaction, but something's wrong. Maybe it just happens to be that every iPad user just doesn't like your website. That's very, very possible, but it's more likely not. So troubleshooting and then refining marketing are two big things, I would say. And when it comes to the website, how often do you think that should be updated? Should that should that be updated based off of a rebrand or should it be someone that gets like me, I get bored and I'll just do it every five to six months? <laughs> it really just depends. I mean, again, you don't want to do too much because you don't want people to come here and be like, wait, did I come to the right site? What is this? I'm confused. Like, so you don't want to do that. So in terms of ref the, the refreshing the design, line of the way that depends so I have a couple of clients who are retail focused and so for them we're doing stuff pretty much all the time but design wise we like we'll switch up the banner images and some of the other contexts uh, quarterly so basically with the season so spring summer fall winter we'll do that and that would be my recommended when it comes to like businesses it's more of I would do it with your campaign. And so again, campaigns can last three to six months to 12 months sometimes. And so I would do it with whatever it is you're trying to push at that particular moment. All right, cool. So what do you have planned for 2017? Oh, 2017. I would like to say that I plan on sleeping, but that's not going to happen. Well, we're just, we're just going to, keep trying to our aim is to be remarkable and I it sounds like a broken record but I feel like the whole point is to just keep growing and keep getting better and so 2016 has been amazing and so 2017 we just want to keep improving keep our clients happy just keep doing good work um maybe get some new happy clients those would be fun <laughs> Nothing's wrong with new happy clients. Let's see. So I've known you for, is it three years? Two years? 
Like two, yeah, I think two. Two years. Well, I just want to, you know, acknowledge you because you are such a sweet person. Oh, you're you're the neighbor I haven't visited yet. <laughs> I'm always here. I told you you can come watch TV. The well, app we'll, is like. <laughs> well, we'll we'll talk about that later. No, but you are um, a hard worker. I mean, anytime I talk to her, she has like 20 clients at a time, and. I mean, that's amazing. I don't know how you juggle it all. Professional development, Toastmaster queen. <laughs> no, but um, you really do do good work. And it's been a pleasure watching your success. Um, for the people out there, how can they get in touch with you? And how do you define success? Okay, well, I guess first you can get in touch with me. Email. It's Dana, D-A-N-A, at B-I-D, creative.com. And then we're on Facebook, B-I-D, L-L-C, um, Pinterest. What is our Pinterest? Oh, Be Inspired Daily, because that's important. Oh, I like that play. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, no, B-I-D, it's, it has a lot of meaning. Also, I'm going to just do a sh- quick shameless plug, Be Impactful Day 2017, April 22nd. Okay, <laughs> okay. Oh, be imp- okay, I like that. T- okay. <laughs> There's no, there's a lot of play with B B I D. Yeah. My mom, my mom says blessing in disguise. So. So yeah, B I D. <laughs> uh, but success, I guess, success me to me means just never giving up and be always be willing to learn, take criticism, keep getting better celebrate the small wins as much as you do the big wins and reflect on where you have come from and how far you've gone that's that to me is is success when you're happy with who you are but you know that you still have a lot to go definitely definitely well dana i want to thank you for being on the show I want to thank everyone for tuning in remember i believe in you a personal connection leads to an influential network thanks for networking with michelle